Hi everyone, and welcome to this week's Lowdown. Uh, we're getting ready for Christmas here at Hallbrook. I th uh, next week is Christmas week, and I think the day I'm filming this, I think is the last day of Hanukkah. So, I thought to myself, what can I do for the membership of Hallbrook Country Club during this holiday season? And I thought that I was going to give you the best lowdown ever. So I'm going to open up the vault this week, and I'm going to give you what I refer to as an Allen Iverson lowdown. And the reason it's an Allen Iverson lowdown is you can watch the slowdown. You don't even have to practice. You don't even have to practice. You're going to get better at golf. All right, so I was on Twitter last night, and I read an article by Jason Sutton, who's a golf pro in Carolina. Great article. He gave the, the 10 most common mistakes that amateur golfers do on the golf course. 10 golf course management mistakes. And I gave a lot of playing lessons last fall, and there's certainly some things that I thought were commonalities. Some things that I see our membership do wrong when we go out and play the golf course. So I'm going to give you a top four list today. I'm going to take you on the golf course and give you the top four things that our members do when they play, incorrectly when they play golf at Hallbrook Country Club. You don't have to practice. Follow these guidelines. You'll get better. We'll see you out in the golf course. Thanks for coming on the course with me. The first place I'm taking you to is number 13 here at Hallbrook Country Club, par 3. You all know it. For the fourth most common thing I see our members do wrong on the golf course, I'm going to try to do a Dave Letterman drum roll. Ding! The fourth most common thing I see our members do on the golf course is having negative thoughts in their head. So I'm out here, number 13 here, bunker on the right side of the green, creek in front. But I have an enormous green out there, just a gigantic green. But yet I think when people go to take their swing and go to set up the shot, they see the bunker, they see that creek. Okay? I, all I want to think about when I go to hit the shot is that enormous green. I'm trying to put my ball anywhere on that big old green. The closer to the hole, the better. Pins right in the middle. I ought to be looking right at that flag stick. All I'm trying to think about is hitting the green and what I have to do to allow myself to hit the green. Okay, so if, if, if you have me taking lessons from me and we're working on, you know, swinging more from the inside or swinging more to the left, whatever it is, that's okay to think about when you swing. New grip, new stance, whatever. That's fine because that's what it takes to get the job done. But don't look at the bunker. Don't look at the creek. Don't think about hitting your ball in there. Think about the green, think about the enormity of it, and we're thinking about taking the proper motion to get ourselves to hit the ball and accomplish what it is we're trying to accomplish. So the fourth most common thing I see our members do wrong is negative thoughts in their so head. So the third most common thing I see our membership do wrong, I brought us to the back side of hole number 15. I have flown the green too far, the freak is on the opposite side of the green. Ding, the third most common thing I see our membership do wrong is knowing not where to put their bad shot. Here's what I mean by that. If you watch the U.S. Open, you hear it a lot. So-and-so is 150 yards from the hole, but he wants to make sure to leave himself short of the hole. They don't want to hit a pass hole because they don't want to have a downhill putt. Now, how do we relate, relate that to our average member here at Hallbrook Country Club, the average 15 handicapper, let's say? Well, we're not so good from 150, 160 yards where we can really dictate where we're exactly we're going to put that ball. But you can on your chips and you can on your 40 and 50 and 60 yard shots. So for example here, I don't know if you can see it or not, but I've hit, hit one chip already and it's short of the hole. It's about 12 feet short of the hole. I know that statistics tell us that if I hit this chip, and even if I hit it 15 feet too far, so that would be 3 feet longer than the 12 footer, that statistically I have a better chance of making that putt because I'm hitting the punt uphill. And that statistics also tell me that I have a much, much less chance of three putting it. Okay, because even a downhill putt, or we have fast and severe greens here, so oftentimes we leave ourselves with downhill putts, we're gonna end up three putting them. Even if they're closer to the hole, then the putt is coming back up the hill. So in this particular case, what I'm trying to tell you is that it's okay on this chip to be aggressive. Because I know even if it goes too far, I'm going to leave myself an uphill putt. And I'd rather have that than a downhill putt. Even if it's a few feet farther away. The opposite holds true from the other side of the green. If I was chipping from the other side of the green, it may be a particular case where I want to be just a little bit more uh, conservative with that chip. I don't want to be as aggressive. But even if I leave myself five or six feet, as long as it's putting it back almost dead up the hill, that's exactly what I'm looking for. So let's see how I do here.
almost got it. I let myself about three feet back up the hill. It's okay in this particular case to be aggressive because I'm going to put it back up the hill. See on the so next. The one. second most common thing I see our members do wrong in the golf course. I brought you back to hole number 13. Ding! The second most common thing I see our members do wrong is always leave the ball short of the green on approaching shots. So again, I'm a hole number 13. There's no excuse anymore for us not knowing the yardages. Right over here to my left, I have a plaque that says 187 yards. I have a bush nail in my hand. I come up here, give it a quick look. It's 183 yards long. It's downhill. I take a little distance off it. I have a 7 iron in my hand. I hit the ball dead in the hole. It landed about 10 yards short of the green. There's no way I'm going to hit a 7 iron to that hole. I don't care how big my ego is, that doesn't help me get my score lower. I at least have to hit a 5 iron to get that ball to go to that hole. It is so important that you know your distances. There's no reason not to. We have great technology now with our flight scope. You come in during the winter hitting the net. We can do a, a gapping session with you and tell you what you hit your irons, how far you hit each iron, total distance, and for the maybe more importantly, carry distance. Yet when I come out with folks, we're constantly leaving things short of the green where there's no reason to. We need to hit the ball and take advantage of our good swings and hit the ball the right distance or, or, or pin high, as we should say it. Okay, so there's no reason not, there's no reason to leave as many shots short of the green as we do. So second most common mistake, leaving our shots short of the, short of the hole on approaching iron shots. All right, so for the number one thing I see our membership do wrong here at Auburn Country Club, when playing the golf course, I brought you to the front side of the number 18, pin is most of the way back. Ding, the number one mistake I see our membership make around the course when playing golf, bad management mistakes, whatever the heck you want to call it, using too much loft around the greens. Now, if you're a student of mine and you've taken a lot of lessons from me, you know that I love lob wedges. I encourage everyone here at Hallbrook that doesn't have a lob wedge, come out to the shop this week and buy one. Because it's very difficult to play our golf course without a lob wedge. We have too many instances around here where we short side ourselves and need a lofted club and a lofted shot around the green to be able to keep the ball close to the hole. But all that being said, for the love of all things holy people, put your live wedge in your bag unless you absolutely need it. Because the shot required to hit it and hit it close is a talented shot and a shot that if you make it make a mistake, the errors tend to be very, very bad. Okay? So right here I have an example. The pin, like I said, is most of the way back. I'm going to hit two shots. I have two balls there in front of the green. I'm going to hit two shots. One low lets it runs up. Let it run up with a seven iron. And one high. Watch the swing as I take both of these shots. So I hit that barely onto the green. Rolls about five, six feet away from the hole. Not a bad shot either. It's about 10 or 11 feet away from the hole. I didn't quite get great contact with it. But my point is, if you watched, the second one took a much longer swing. And if I had bladed it, for example, the ball is over the green. But yet I see everyone around here grab out that lob wedge, take this big old flop shot when you don't need it. If you have green between you and the hole, and if your name is, doesn't start with Phil and doesn't end with Mickelson, put the lob wedge in the bag, Grab out a lower lofted club, hit the ball in the front of the green, and let it roll back to the hole. Your scorecard will thank you. All right, so those are my top four things. The four things you can do without practice, practice, that you can do to get yourself better at golf. Your scorecard will thank you. We'll see you next week on The Lowdown.